it's a little different than filming like normal people because not no <laughs> not like that uh no it's just more like you have to plan and you have there's more that goes into it for his board side for trick of the year we actually spent a day there before so it was three days mapping and planning letting where the poles are where the ledge is how tall it is how much wax we need there's a curb just to like get that one trick you're like the filmer you're kind of like oh justin i know that you can do this trick like i know this spot and there's sometimes we get there and he's like dude there's no way i could do this like yeah. because of this I was uh, diagnosed uh, with my condition, retinitis pigmentosa, when I was eight years old. It runs in the family, and so when I got diagnosed with it, the science wasn't that advanced yet. They told me I wouldn't go blind until I was 50 and to not worry about it. We had options to go to uh, blind and deaf schools. My dad was just like, I, he can see now. I don't want to stress him out about the future, so let's let him be a kid. Childhood was just like full of just sports. My dad was a jock, so he got me in the t-ball, uh, roller hockey, um, anything that involved movement, uh, me and my brother were involved in, and it was just so much uh, time to play, it felt like. It wasn't until seventh grade, the first skate park in, uh, public skate park in Vegas opened up, and then that opened everything up for me. <laughs> Four one ones were just my jam because you can get like last year's four on ones for like ten bucks. Tony Hawk's Giant Skate Park Tour when you got to know some of the pros and then like Mike V, Alex Chalmers, the way they skated was uh, just different than some of the street stuff I was seeing in the skate shops. I was 13, I could see pretty well and just skated and, like nothing was happening. It wasn't until I was 20 I got in a car accident and then that's when it all started going. At the time. Even though I was diagnosed being legally blind, I could still see, I just couldn't drive a car, you know, stuff like that. So I knew the timeline was gonna get shorter. So I had a skateboard and that became my transportation and I was skating harder than ever. I was at the skate park every day skating and it wasn't until I was 25 where one week at the skate park, everything started getting really, really hard to see and the shadows started getting like harder to find and I just missed a lot of rails and I missed a lot of everything and started running into people and I just looked down on my feet and just realized I couldn't see my feet anymore. I knew then that I was becoming blind. What I see now is my version of gray with just fireworks everywhere because my, uh, my retinals are trying to find light and so it's just constantly shooting off um, photoreceptors to try to find something to see so it just makes its own light now. It was almost like a sense of denial where you're just like no nah, this ain't yet this ain't yet and until the final things of like you know you're just realizing like oh, I can't see my feet anymore like not even shadows of my feet everything hits you you know at a skate park where you know somewhere that you felt secure your whole life and it's like you know a safe place and then you're like oh, I gotta make it home still the walk that night was like an hour and a half of just muscle memory bumping in the stuff like almost just getting beat up the whole way home emotionally and physically. And I think that's uh, why I went into that three month uh, dark time where I just didn't want to leave my room. It's uh, something I always am honest about because um, a lot of people always tell me I'm an inspiration. And I never quit and I never give up. And I was like, that's right now. But I, there was a time I quit and I did give up. And it's okay to hit rock bottom because that's what I hit. I hit rock bottom hard, just drinking nonstop, emotionally messed up because you're, you're taking pills, you're taking Tylenol PM, anything to sleep because sleeping's the only time you see. Then I was living in my dreams. And looking back on it, I was grieving for my eyes. You know, it was uh, a part of me that died that's 
you know, wasn't with me anymore. I come from a family, it's just uh, my dad, it's a lot of tough love, and um, it's exactly what I needed, because he just, uh, after three months, he was done with it too. He's like, all right, I think that's long enough to grieve. He didn't care about, you know, like, oh, I, I don't know what going blind's like or anything like that. He just knew he was losing his son. And so he just came in and just told me, like, kind of angry. It's like, you're not the first person to go blind, so stop acting like you are. And uh, that just woke me up. It was like, it was, it was just a wake up call. Like, I'm not. Why am I being so selfish to think this is only happening to me? This happens to other people all over the world. And so like from that day on, stopped everything and, uh, you know, started working out my, uh, my problems, you know, going to a therapist to actually talk it out uh, along with, um, you know, putting in the work of uh, learning how to live independently without sight. You know, I wanted to do this all on my own and I kind of broke down to a friend of mine. What he does is he has his company and he teaches kids on the spectrum uh, motor and social skills. And he's like, do you want to come and try to work for me? And it was just that skater mentality of like, dude, we, let's see if you fail. Let's just try. He trusted me to teach uh, kids how to skateboard. And that's actually how I 100% came back to skateboarding. It would eventually get to like, you know, man, these kids have got to start dropping in. Like, how am I going to teach that when I don't even do that? The most memorable was when I um, first dropped back in, you know, and it was because I had to. The kids uh, were starting to get a little bit more advanced. Just literally going off of muscle memory, and I just remember just getting on it, dropping in, solid drop in, and just feeling so happy. Everything's coming back, and then coming up to the other side, don't even know what I'm gonna do, get into a rock and just hang up and then hit the flat. When I felt my shoulder hit the ground, it was the best feeling in the world. Just from that moment on, I just knew I was never gonna give it up again. I don't care if I ever get back to what I was, I just, I wanted to chase that feeling forever. The best part about skating now is I have so much going through my head, so it literally pushes out every part of my life. Like, the last thing on my mind is I'm blind because I have to think about, listen to that sound device, feel your cane, what's in front of you, what your feet are gonna do, what tricks you're gonna do. So my brain is just full of every other measurement in my head to get to the trick. So any sad thought, any bad thought, any other life thought is just, there's no room for it. So I'd say when I skate, it's just single-minded and it's, it's really good. It's like meditation. I'm really, really excited for people to see this part. Chris sent me a audio described version of it. So he's describing the whole part in the clip that he sent me and the way that he edited it. I, I think it really shows off how hard I work to get my tricks. Being a blind skater and skating the way I skate, you just throw your body and you hope for the best. So I, I think he did a great job with the edit. Is it uh, different uh, filming with a skater that never needs to see his clips? <laughs> if I mess up filming a clip, I don't have to worry. I could just be like, yeah. it looks great, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> right? I do it the other way around. I'm like, oh man, you landed it so clean, but I'm like, oh, you landed a little sketchy. And then, then I go get that second angle. Yeah. <laughs> I just kind of wanted a different part of skateboarding that I felt like I was missing out on and a lot of kids were missing out on of demo type of skateboarding, that real team atmosphere. And I reached out to Mike, I kind of told him like what I wanted and he just reached out and was like, I want that too. Just with that joint uh, connection and the same once, it just was an easy fit. It's really cool to have a team owner that is actually checking out your skate clips, like hitting you up and being like, that was rad. Or, you know, just really having the support that you want in that team atmosphere and so I'm really excited for the future of what's gonna happen with Street Plant. Everyone always says uh, skateboarding's everything but to me it's it's everything because it's it's saved my life. When you're a young kid it gives you confidence, it gives you something you're good at, it, it gives you the, the ability to learn a skill that's not instant gratification, it teaches you how to work hard. Just having those foundations right off the bat it transitioned into when I lost my sight. It, it taught me to just keep, keep failing forward. You know, it, it's, it taught me how to just keep going, keep going, keep going. 
I didn't realize that that's one of the reasons my transition from losing my sight to independence, it was easier because I had that skateboard mentality that nothing is easy. You're gonna have to work hard if you want it. And so like just having that uh, taught to me at a young age because of skateboarding, it's just changed my life forever and saved me. I would say to anybody, find the one thing that you truly love, if that's music, if that's art, if that's you know carpentry, if that's anything, if you can find one thing that you can fall back on when life's at its worst. I, I want everyone to learn from my mistake. When life got so hard for me, I gave up the one thing that could have saved me, the one thing that could have kept me grounded, and I threw it away. And so like the minute you think your life's getting hard, the minute you think anything's going wrong and you think like, well, I don't have time for my music, I don't have time for this, or I'm too old for that, or that's the thing that's gonna give you passion for the rest of your life. And then it's gonna help you get through those hard times of when life sucks. So just find the one thing you love and just hold on to it forever.